Hello everyone. It's the 12th of April 2015 and by popular request my goal today is to show all of you how to make a WordPress website yourself from start to finish step by step without skipping any steps. This is the amazing website I am going to show you how to create. Web developers will easily charge you upwards of three even four thousand dollars for something like this. But just follow along with me and you will be able to do everything yourself for next to nothing in the time it takes you to follow along with my tutorial. So this is the full tutorial so start getting excited. Let me show you exactly what your new website will look like by the time you finish watching this video. Here are some of its amazing features. Why don't you go to our demo site emcvantagedemo.com to see for yourself. A beautiful drop down menu a nice image slider that automatically rotates through your images, a professional home page that you can customize yourself to have any layout you wish. I will show you how to create any layout and add any items that you want all by yourself. If you can use a keyboard and mouse and can drag and drop things that's how easy it will be. I'll also show you how to add a dynamic Google Map if you have a physical place of business which is great because it helps customers find you very very easily. I'll also show you how to add social media to the site if you have your social media pages set up and one of my favorites I'll be showing you how to install a beautiful image gallery. When a visitor clicks on your images it will display in this lovely pop-out effect and they will be able to click through through all your images in your gallery. This is actually one of my favorite features and I'll show you how easy it is to install. It's really no effort at all. And also I'll show you how to add a contact form so that customers can easily get in touch with you. The design I'm going to show you how to install works perfectly on a mobile phone as well. The design is responsive. As you can see everything renders absolutely perfectly. And also the Google Map is dynamic and works perfectly on a mobile as well which is important because customers that are on the go can easily find you when they're on the way to your shop or whatever it is. You can zoom in, zoom out and it's really really user friendly. WordPress is used by a number of big known notable names around the world. So here's a quick list. Names include New York Times, UPS, eBay and a number of other massive massive names uh, around the world and they all rely on the WordPress platform that we're going to be using. We're going to be using exactly the same platform all these guys are using. And you might think oh, that might be complicated but it's not. It's really really simple. WordPress is very user friendly and it's really easy to manage and that's why a lot of big companies choose WordPress and the best thing about it is that it won't cost anything if you follow this tutorial. I'll show you how to do everything and on that note I'll just open up this slide here. Here is an overview of what we're going to cover in this tutorial. Firstly I will show you how to get online. So firstly we need to purchase our www. Uh, .com domain name. So it can be anything you choose, your business name .com or any other name. I'll show you how to get that for about $12 per year and I'll show you where to get that as well. The second thing is web hosting at $6 per month. Hosting is just a fancy way of saying a computer where all of your files are stored, your website's files are stored so that anyone who lands on your domain can access your website 24-7. Essentially without having web hosting your domain would just be a blank page because all the files that go behind your website, all the text, the images, the design, all have to be stored on a web hosting server. And that's why web hosting is essential. It's the only other essential thing other than a domain that actually costs money. Now, after that, setting up your website. Number three, installing the website and the web design. If you go out and get quotes from web developers, I guarantee you that they will charge you $3,000, $4,000, even more than $5,000 for 
to get a website developed. And even then, the quality might not be that great. Um, so I urge you to do that if you really want to. But this way, this method that I show you will not cost you anything. It will be absolutely nothing. Just follow along with what I do and you'll get what I demonstrated to you at the beginning of the video. And number four, set up and management of your entire site. I'll show you how to set everything up, all the different pieces of functionality, all the cool features. Therefore, the rest of this tutorial is dedicated to showing you how to set everything up and also manage everything. So just follow along with what I do and you'll have this awesome WordPress website that's used by major, major companies all around the world for next to nothing. In a nutshell, first we need to get our domain and hosting. Secondly, install the website and the design. And thirdly, set up and configure everything. So we'll tick these off as we go along. Also, you may notice that there is a link in the description below. And that link takes you through to our emediacoach.com website. And what I've done is set up a page here where I'm going to be putting down all the resources that you need during this tutorial. So everything's easy for you to find. Everything is all in one place. Go and visit that link and refer back to that page anytime I tell you to refer to this website. And of course, if I have any updates down the track, I will add them. So the first thing we need to do is get domain and hosting. I'll show you the quickest, easiest, and also most cost-effective way to get that. So if you just go to the HostGator link, Alternatively, just go to your address bar and just type in hostgator.com. It'll take you straight there. Um, I've been using HostGator for my hosting for approximately nine years myself. For everything from my websites to my blogs to my e-commerce stores, I've been using these guys for a long, long time. And they're one of the most well-known and popular web hosting companies in the world. They've got a 24 hour, 7 days a week live chat if you need any help with anything. They've got a 45 day money, guarantee, money back guarantee, no questions asked. They've won a number of awards. Now you can choose any other host if you choose to, that's absolutely fine. But just keep in mind that you may find it a little bit difficult to follow along with the steps in this tutorial if you use a different host because some of them are slightly different from HostGator in the way that you install things, etc, etc. So essentially, I'll be demonstrating this from my HostGator account. So ideally, you'll be signing up to HostGator. Um, you can purchase your domain from them as well. So click the Get Started button. Then let's choose a plan. You'll see there are three plans on offer. The business plan we can rule out. They've got features that are not necessary. The hatchling and baby are very similar with one key difference. The hatchling plan allows you to host a single domain whereas a baby plan allows you to host an unlimited number of domains. Now if this is your first website you'll only be hosting a single domain. However if you have got or you plan on adding a number of domains then the baby plan would be good for you. Having said that, you can always start with the Hatchling plan and upgrade down the track. There is a difference in price. Hatchling is a little bit cheaper. So just decide on what's best for you. For me, for this tutorial, for this demonstration, I'm going to choose a Hatchling plan. It is also the cheapest plan and it has everything we need. So let's just click the sign up now button. If you already own your domain, click this tab here and enter your domain in this field here. Alternatively, I, I assume most of you need to register a new domain and therefore enter the domain that you want to own in this field here. So it can be anything from your business name to any, anything else. What this process will do is actually search to see if the domain is available if it's not available, it will notify you and you'll simply have to select another domain. Now just FYI, a .com is my personal preference. You can also choose a .net, org, info, biz, it doesn't matter. Everything works in exactly the same way as a .com, but it's just my personal preference to use a .com. 
Okay, so for this tutorial, I will register a domain called emcvantagedemo.com. And as you can see, the system searched through to see if that domain was available, and it was, and it has added it to the cart. Next, go down and select a billing cycle that you're comfortable with. And it says here a 20% discount, but in just a second, I'm going to show you how to get an even bigger discount than the default 20%. So stay with me. If you choose a one month cycle, there is a coupon that you can use to get the first month hosting for just one cent. As you can see, the longer you subscribe for upfront, the cheaper it gets. So let's choose a one month cycle for now. If you just skip through that section and go to the additional services area, deselect anything that's selected in that section. The reason is these additional options are not essential. They are completely optional and definitely not essential for you to set up your website. Now in this coupon code area, it will have a standard default coupon code giving you the 20% off. So just keep in mind what your amount due so far is. If you've selected a one month term, enter this coupon instead. One dirty cent. One D-I-R-T-Y-C-E-N-T. -E and then don't forget to click the validate button and your amount will be updated which will give you one month hosting your first month for one cent and of course your domain is registration for one year and when you purchase this you will be the owner the sole owner of that domain and that 1295 is for one full year alternatively if you want to subscribe for more than one month at a time so let's say 12 months which is what I normally do then go down amount due at the moment is eighty six dollars use this coupon instead my host most m y h o s t m o s t don't forget to validate and your amount is seventy five dollars so take advantage of these coupons that hostgator provides they will always give you a bigger discount than the standard 20% off. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Now, go back up and finish up entering everything else. So select your username. Select a security pin. And enter your billing info. It's very important that you enter the correct email address, your email address you will receive a confirmation email welcoming you to the HostGator family and also providing you your new account details which you will need to set up the WordPress platform and I'll show you that in the next step. So enter your personal email address and you've got an option of processing your payment with credit card or PayPal. Now I'm going to stop this video and blur my screen while I enter in all my personal payment details. So I suggest you pause this video and resume when you've entered in all of your details here. Okay that's done. I have entered in all of my personal details, my personal email address and my payment details. When you've done that go down just ensure any of these add-on services are deselected unless you really want them but they're not essential. Go down and confirm the amount due. You'll see a, I have read and agree to the terms of conditions. Just check that and hit the check out now button and as soon as you do that you will be the sole owner of your domain, you will have hosting and that is all you will need to pay for. There is nothing else after this point that will cost you any money whatsoever. These are the only two essentials that are unavoidable. From time to time I receive small referral credits from HostGator. This helps me cover the costs of producing these tutorials and allows me to bring them to you for free. So I thank you for your support in advance. Now click the checkout button and I'll show you the next step. The next thing you will receive is a confirmation email from HostGator. 
you should receive this within about five minutes of completing your purchase. It will contain information such as your control panel link and I'll show you what to do with that in a second, your username, password and the domain which you now own. So the next step of this process is to log into what is known as your control panel and install the WordPress platform that we've been talking all about. So I'll just open that link in a new tab and then enter the username and password over here in the next screen. So I'll just copy and paste. And then log in. Perfect. This is known as your HostGator control panel and you won't really need to come to this too often. At the moment all we need to do is go down, find a section called quick install and click on that. Then in the left hand column click on WordPress and continue. Your domain should automatically appear in the drop down box. If it doesn't, just go down and select it. Leave this field blank. Let's disable auto upgrades. Now, in the admin email area, enter your own personal email address that you check regularly. And in admin user, just put in admin then click the install now button. This will install the WordPress platform onto your, onto your website. There we go, WordPress is now successfully installed and it's the same platform that all the other big names around the world use. You'll see here that it gives you a URL for your admin area and a username and password. This URL is very important. It will be your domain forward slash WP dash admin. Now I'd like you to write that down somewhere. Just keep note of it and keep note of your username. I'm going to show you how to change your password because that is not very memorable. So the first thing I'll show you when we log in is how to change your password. So anyway, let's go to this link here. Now keep in mind, after installing WordPress, often it takes 10 to 15 minutes for it to activate and that only happens the first time when you install. So if that link doesn't work for you, just come back in 10 to 15 minutes and try again. Eventually, you should see a screen that looks like that. This is known as your WordPress administration login. You'll need to come to this page and log in anytime you want to make additions or manage anything on your website. So now copy and paste your username and password and click login. Lovely. This is the WordPress admin dashboard and you'll be using all the features here to manage your entire website and that's what the rest of this tutorial is dedicated to showing you how to do. I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about using this WordPress dashboard and tuning your site so it looks absolutely amazing. For now let's change our password. So in the left hand side you'll see a section for users. If you hover over that just click on all users. Click on your username. Now if you scroll down, you'll see a section to enter your new password. After you've entered your password, click on the update profile link and that will have updated. So in a nutshell, I want you to write down three things on a piece of paper. I want you to write down your link there, your domain forward slash wp-admin, 
your username and your new password. And it may be worth mentioning, your website is already live and functional. So if you go to your domain, yourwebsite.com, you'll see that it is a live and functional website. Obviously it doesn't look anything like we want it to look, but that doesn't matter. We've only just begun, and now we've installed the basics to get ourselves started. So we're going really well. Let's just come back to this overview page, and let's tick off this. We've done that. We've installed our WordPress admin area, and the next thing we'll do is install the design. So we're making good progress. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me via the comments section. I'm more than happy to help you out. Now back into our WordPress admin dashboard, I'm going to show you how to install the website design. It's going to be really easy. In the comments below, you'll see a link that takes you to our emediacoach.com website. So I'll just bring that along here. It's that page here. It's just a snapshot of different resources that you'll need throughout this video to just keep everything in one place. Click on that link and then go to the Vantage theme link here. Save that file somewhere you can easily access, preferably your desktop. Now back into your admin area, if you just go and hover over Appearance, click on Themes. In WordPress, a design is known as a theme. So what we want to do is add a new theme. And we want to upload that file which we just downloaded. So click Browse and go to that file wherever you save that on your computer and click Install Now. Great, so our theme has been installed. Now we need to click the Activate link. Okay, that's done. We've installed the website design and currently that's what it looks like. We are one step closer to where we want to be. Now that you've installed the theme, you'll just need to make a couple of quick configuration changes. So I want you to go down to theme settings and go to the layout tab. In the masthead layout drop down, select logo in menu, then click save changes. Okay, now in the navigation tab, you've got a few different options, you can go through them in your own time. Currently, I have search in menu enabled. I'll show you what that is. It's this little search icon. I will disable that just as a personal preference. And that's all. I'll show you what to do with a few of these other items a bit later in this tutorial. But for now, that's all we need to do. Okay, we're making really good progress. Next, there are some initial configuration changes that we need to make to your overall website. You only need to do this once. Once it's set up, you don't need to do this again. So the first thing I'll ask you to do is go to Settings and click on General. Here you can enter a site title, probably your business name and a tagline which I normally leave blank. Go down and click Save Changes. Next you'll notice that when you go to your domain it does not have a www in front of it. As a personal preference I just like showing the www so to do that just click here 
enter www. and the same thing in this field then click save changes this will actually prompt you to log in again but you'll notice now if you go to your website it stays there okay next go to hosts when you installed the WordPress platform it automatically installs a default post called hello world so let's trash that then go into the trash can and delete permanently and do the same thing in pages there is a default page that is loaded when you installed WordPress Cool. Now go into plugins and click on installed plugins. A plugin is essentially an add-on to your WordPress website. So think of WordPress as, as a base. You can add a number of different features onto WordPress and you can actually achieve a lot of cool things. An example of that is a photo gallery or an image gallery. There is a plugin to add a beautiful image gallery. Another example is a contact form. There's a plugin available to add a contact form to your website. So a plugin is essentially an add-on and there's thousands of them out there. At the moment WordPress installs a couple of them by default which we don't really need. So if these are installed when you install WordPress just follow what I do here. So Jetpack, just check that. Mojo, check that and Supercache go down to this drop down menu and click deactivate and apply after that's deactivated check them again and let's delete yes delete these files good stuff and now one of the last things we need to do as far as configuration under settings you'll see an area called permalinks so click on that at the moment when you make a post it takes on this really long non-user friendly URL so let's change that choose post name as your permalink setting and then click save changes And that's all as far as initial configuration goes. So this is what your site looks like so far. Next, let's add a logo into the top left over here. So if you've already got a logo ready, just go to Appearance, Theme Settings. In the Logo tab, you can choose your image and upload them from your computer and then they'll get uploaded into what's known as your media library and you'll be able to click this set logo button and you'll have your own logo and it will appear in this section here however if you do not have a logo ready to go I'll show you a really cool place I use to create a logo quickly and easily myself go to online logo maker Com. Go to the Start Online Logo Maker link. Just delete whatever's on that screen initially. And here you can add a symbol from a number of different categories. And you can also add some text and so I'll go ahead and add a symbol you can resize by clicking on the corner and dragging you can change the color through this drop down here you can add text
and you can also change the font and color of the text. My background is dark, so that's why I'm choosing a light color so that it contrasts. Cool, that looks pretty good. When you're happy with your logo, just go to the download logo link here and click OK and you can save that on your computer. Now that that's done, back in this appearance logo tab, let's go to our media library and select the logo we just created. You can see the logo gets uploaded to the media library and then click on the set logo link and then save settings. So now if I refresh the site, there you go. It's as easy as that to create or add a logo to your website. If you haven't already got a logo ready, I'm going to let you in on a secret of mine where I get a lot of my design. Go to a site called Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. This is an online marketplace where you can buy basically anything, all kinds of services. Search for logo design. You'll see there are no shortage of people offering logo design services. You'll be able to look at their uh, feedback, so let's take a couple of them as an example. You could look at their feedback, their past work, scroll through and find a designer that you like. When you have found somebody, you can join, become a member of this site, then you'll be able to purchase one of these services for $5. But really, for $5, you really get some amazing designers. So feel free to have a look around. It can be hit and miss sometimes, but you will generally find somebody who's pretty good at what they do. Now it's time to take advantage of another awesome feature of this website and that is configuring this slider area that you see here, this image slider. So the first thing you need to do is click on the link in the description below. It will take you to this page on our eMediaCoach.com website and the thing you need to download now is the Meta Slider plugin. So click on that, download it to your PC Then go back into your dashboard, go to plugins and add new. We want to upload a plugin, so let's browse and find that Metaslider plugin, that file that we just downloaded, it's that one there, ML Slider. Open and install now. And that's it, you now have to activate the plugin. And there you go. So the next step is you'll see the Meta Slider tab appear in the left hand side column. So click on that. Let's create our first slideshow. Okay. So let's add our slides. Once again, you can upload files from your computer. So I've got my images stored somewhere here. What you can do is actually just select all or hold down shift, select the first, hold down shift, select the last and then open. And what that will do is upload all of the images you selected into your media library. Depending on how big the images are, this can take some time.
Great. Now click the Add to Slider button. And you'll see them all appear. So now, it will appear in the order they are listed in here. But if you want to change the order they appear in, simply just drag and drop like I'm doing here. So you can see how easy it is to configure the slider. Actually a lot of features in WordPress are drag and drop and it's one of the reasons WordPress is very very easy to use. You'll see more, you'll see more of that a bit later. So when you're done rearranging you can also delete by clicking on the delete icon there. Now in the right hand side column I recommend a width of 1080. Height, it's completely up to you. I usually use something between 350 and 400. So I'll go with 370 for now. And the other thing you'll need to do is in the theme drop down, select Vantage Flex. Okay, let's save for now. And of course, you can change the height to whatever you think is best. Another setting that you will find useful is this thing called slide delay. Essentially, that is the length of time each slide appears for before the next. So this number here is in milliseconds, so that there is 3 seconds. You can change that to whatever you want, so say I want 8 seconds between each slide. And everything else you can go through in your own time. But when you're done doing that, click save. Now if you refresh your site, it won't take effect. It shouldn't take effect because there's one more thing we need to do. And that is go to appearance and theme settings. Now go to the, yep, the home tab. And in the home page slider area, select the new slider and then save settings. So now it should take effect. That is great. That looks absolutely terrific. And after each 8 seconds the new slide will appear. Of course if you want to change any of the settings, just go back into the meta slider and go ahead and make the changes. and that will immediately take effect. Perfect. So that's how to install and configure your image slider on your website. If you have any questions about that, please do ask me in the comments below. The next thing we will be doing is starting to set up our home page. Now let's go ahead and set up our home page area. I'm going to be giving you all of the information and tools and knowledge you need to be able to set up this home page in any way you want. What I show you will be a demonstration, but I will give you the tools and knowledge for you to set it up in any kind of layout that you wish and that's suitable for your business website. So if I go back into the admin area, go under appearance and home page, you will see it tells me to install something called Page Builder. But don't click on that button. Instead of doing that, I want you to install the version that is on our eMedia Coach website. The reason is you may not be able to follow along properly if the version has been changed. Um, so therefore, if you install this version that I show you here, everything will be exactly the same. So all you need to do is go to that link. It should be in the comments below. Download the Page Builder plugin. This plugin was made by the guys at SiteOrigin.com. Okay, so install, download that initially. Then go to Plugins and Add New. Upload plugin. Browse.
and it's this one here site origin panels then install now and activate the plugin okay once that's activated go to appearance and home page again and you'll see that that notification to install the plugin is not there because we've already done that now the next important step is to switch this switch to on so yes we want to turn on our custom home page and this here is our custom home page so if I save that as it is and I refresh the site you'll see there is stuff there there are three um, circle panels plus a headline widget and this corresponds to these particular sections here so what I'm going to do I'm going to delete everything and start from a blank slate there you go as you can see I'm now going to start with a blank slate to add a new row click that there choose the number of columns you want and you can use this to adjust the width of each column so you can customize them change the width and be as precise as you like For the first one, I'm going to add three columns. Then click the insert button. What I'm going to do is put the three circle panels in here. To do that, click on one of the boxes and hit add widget. Go to the circle icon widget you see here. And you'll see that appear. Similarly, click on the second one. Add widget circle icon and the same for the last I'll go through this bit by bit so you know exactly what changes we're making there you are so now let's go and customize all that click the edit button you see here now let's give the first panel a title it could be our products or our services whatever relates to your business In this drop down here, you'll be able to select an icon. This icon will appear in that dark circle that you saw earlier. So feel free to use a bit of trial and error. Let's choose a rocket icon. Now set the icon size to large and for more text we will come back and update this a little bit later when we have all the pages on our website ready but essentially this will be a link to another page on your site together with the more URL which will take you to that page for now let's click done there you go as you can see we added the rocket icon we changed the icon size to large from small we added the title and a description later on we'll come back and add a link just over here so that this particular tile links through to another page on our website now let's do the same for the second and third
there you go. The next thing I'll do is add a section under these panels with some text in there. So back into the page builder section, I want to add another row. This time I just want a single column. Insert. Let's add a widget called Visual Editor. And you'll notice I use this Visual Editor quite a bit. It's really flexible and it's also pre-installed which means you don't need to install anything. It's all there ready for you to use. So click that. Hit the edit button. Now let's give that section a title. And now I'm just going to copy across some dummy text that I have on my other screen. This area here just acts as a word editor. If you've ever used Microsoft Word, this is exactly the same. Once you've done that, Now the cool thing is I can actually change the order in which they appear just by hitting that, sorry, pressing down on that button and dragging across. By doing that I can change the location of any of the elements on the page. As you see there. Now say I wanted to add a background color to this element here. To do that, hover above this icon here and click Edit Row. Now when you go to Theme, you'll see an area for background color. You can pick any background color from the palette over here. I'll give it a light grey background. There we are. Next I'll add back the image and the testimonials just under that section here. So let's add a new row, this time with two columns. Once again, I'll add the visual editor in both. Now in here, I want to add an image. Click Add Media and Upload Files. Of course, if an image is already uploaded, you can select that image from your media library. Once selected, ensure link to is none and the size is full size or alternatively large if your original image is extremely large itself. Then click Done. OK. Now I want to add the testimonials. Once again, this visual editor is just like a word editing software. You can do anything you like with it. So we'll give it a title. And testimonials can be done using this little block quote here. What I'm going to do is just copy and paste some testimonials from the other screen that I have here.
and there we are. Last but not least, let's add a Google Map and some open hours just under here. Now this one, I want the map to be quite large. So let's set it to say 3070. If that's not right, we can always come back and rearrange. Now here we want to add a dynamic Google Map. To do that, go to Google Maps, put in your exact business address, Now click on that icon here and click share or embed map. Embed. From the drop down select a custom size and let's try 800 by 400. Go here, copy that entire code. Now in this visual editor, ensure you go to the text tab. The text tab is used for any HTML or code that you would like to enter. If you enter it in the visual tab, that code will not work. So we want to enter that into our text tab. So paste that code in there. Let's give that a title. And click done. There we go. As you can see, the map is probably a bit too tall, so we can easily go back in and change the dimensions. and so on and so forth until you get it right. Now let's give this area a little background color as well. I'm going to give it the same color that I gave the other row. So let me just check what that was. I think I'll just make it a little bit lighter as well. Okay. And there we are. So that's really how easy it is. As you can see, we can add in any elements we want in any position we want and rearrange and adjust the dimensions of each box to precisely the size that you would like it to be. So feel free to brainstorm and come up with how you want your homepage to look and what information you would like to present and go ahead and add each one of those elements in there. The next thing I will show you how to do is add, edit 
and delete pages. So you can start adding content to your website. So if you go to pages, you'll see that there is a button here for add new and through that you can add an unlimited number of pages to your business website. I won't show you how to use this content editor section just yet. I'll show you that a little bit later. For now I'll just set up new pages and go from there. So you can see I've added a page called contact us. If you want to edit a page just click edit on a pre-existing page and you'll be able to make updates. To delete a page just click on the trash button. So I'm just going to go in now and add all the pages for my website. When you've entered a title just click publish. You'll see that the page gets assigned its own URL which is yourwebsite.com forward slash the title of the page. You can edit that if you need. And also you can come back and change the title at any time. Here is an example of how to change the title or the URL of a page. So let's take this one for example. Click edit. Say I want to change image gallery to just gallery. As you can see the URL hasn't actually changed because WordPress knows that just because you change the title of a page doesn't mean that you will change the URL because there may be other things linking to this page. So to change the URL just click this edit button and change that manually. And as you can see, this page takes on the new URL. Carpet. Tiles. and outdoor. Now say under each one of those items, so for us floorboards, carpet, tiles and outdoor, we have another hierarchy of pages. So for floorboards we have solid pine floorboards, and laminate flooring for example. We'll also add a few types of carpet. And I'll add in a couple of types of tiles as well.
So that should do us for now. Here are all the pages I've just created. So obviously you would need to plan out how you would like the hierarchy of your website to be. So top level items and then second level items. So for me the top level items are carpet, floorboards, tiles and outdoor. The second level items for example the second level items under carpet are plush pile, twist pile, cut pile and textured pile. So that's just an example to work your head around. And it's as easy as that to add new pages to your website. So once you've planned your website hierarchy, go ahead and add as many pages as you wish. After adding all of your pages, if you refresh your website, you'll notice that all of the items appear in the top navigation and it looks like a bit of a mess. So the next thing that I will be showing you is how to arrange this area and also create a beautiful looking drop down menu so that people who land on your website will be able to find the information they want very quickly and very easily and it will look awesome and it will be very very organized. So going back into your WordPress dashboard go to appearance and click on the menus link. Now give the menu a title so let's say main menu click create menu and go down select primary menu select that checkbox and then click save. If the items that you want in the menu do not appear in this list simply go to this area here check them off and click add to menu and then they will appear in this area here where you'll be able to arrange the menu in any way you want. Order the menu items in the order in which you want to appear by dragging and dropping. The first thing I'm going to do is locate my first level pages and they are floorboards so I'll put that after home carpet tiles and outdoor okay now I had pages that were going to fall under each one of these four and these are going to be our first level drop down menu items so under floorboards I'll put solid pine floorboards laminate flooring under carpet I'll put twist pile textured pile cut pile and plush pile you'll see what I'm doing here for second level items you need to drag and drop such that they are indented and they will appear below the item above it so I can even go for a third level menu say for example under textured pile I want to add polyester by doing that it would come under carpet by making it indent it would actually come under textured pile and say for example wool blend okay now let's do kitchen tiles under tiles and bathroom tiles we'll have contact us last and that's about it for now let's save menu and see what that looks like there we go so if I just scroll my mouse over each one of these and there you see the third level
and these items were single level items. That is looking absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, all it requires is dragging and dropping the pages that you want in the order and in the hierarchy that you want them in. Another cool thing I'm going to show you is in this links area here, you can actually add a link to any URL and put it in the menu. So for example, that will appear here. Now I can drag and drop that and put it anywhere I want. And if I click on that, it will take me to that URL. To remove any items, click the drop down and hit remove. To change the label, just change that navigation label. So as you can see, that was really simple and it made our website look a thousand times better. From a user's perspective, it's extremely clean and easy to navigate. Once you know the structure of your website, you can implement that structure and your customers will find it very easy to navigate through your entire site. Now I'll show you how you can change the hover color of the menu items here. Go back into your dashboard, go to plugins and add new. For this we need to add a new plugin. Search for one called Simple Custom CSS and that's the one there. Install now and activate the plugin. Cool. Now go to Go to Appearance and you'll see the Custom CSS link appear in there. Okay, for the next step you'll need to go back onto our eMediaCoach.com page, you'll see the link in the description below. In the Additional Resources section I have some code here. All I need you to do is copy that entire piece of code, then paste in this area here. Now open up a new browser window and go to colorpicker.com Okay. First before you do anything I'd like you to copy and paste that there onto a notepad file on your computer in case you want to revert back to the original color. When you're ready, go to Color Picker. Here, you can choose any color you wish. You'll notice that every color has a particular number attached to it, a particular number or letter combination. It's known as a hex code. When you've got the color you're after, just copy and paste in there after the hashtag. Then click Update Custom CSS. Refresh your site. And there you go. You've changed the color of your hover menu. Feel free to use trial and error, experiment, because you can change that as much as you like. But just make sure you do not touch anything else on this page except these numerals right here. Now here is a quick intro on the content editor. 
You'll need to know this so you can go in and edit each one of your pages. Most of this will be self-explanatory, but I'll go through it nonetheless. So let's go ahead and click edit on this page here. The text tab is used for entering any code or HTML. The visual tab works much like a word, ed word editor like Microsoft Word. So I can put in some text. I can set that as a heading. I'll just copy and paste some dummy text I have ready here. That's all normal paragraph text. You can bullet point things. You can number list. You can also bold, italic, and also change color of any text you like by using that icon there. There you are. And you can also hyperlink. Select the words or phrases that you want to hyperlink and click that icon there. By clicking on this arrow, you can actually hyperlink to any page on your website very, very easily. Not only can you hyperlink within your website, but you can also hyperlink externally. So if I highlight that, and that checkbox means that the link will open in a new window which means the user stays on your website. Okay, let's check it out. There we are. And as you can see, that one opened in a new tab. To remove a hyperlink, Click that icon over here. Last but not least, you can add images. Click on the Add Media link. You can either select an image that's already in your image library, otherwise you can upload a new image and select one from your PC. Ensure that the link to is none and the size is sufficiently large. Then click Insert into Page. You can actually link images to anywhere on your website as well by clicking on the image and selecting the hyperlink icon. So as you can see, the content editor is actually extremely easy to use. If you've ever used Microsoft Word or anything like that, it will be a piece of cake. The next thing I need to share with you is a bit of information about page templates and what they are. There are three types of page templates. A default template which has a sidebar, 
a full width template, which means the page and content runs across the whole screen, and a custom template built with Page Builder. Templates can be selected from this drop down menu here within each page. So, as you can see, there's a default template which includes a sidebar. Currently, this is the template used for this page, and that's what it looks like. The content is over here, and then we have sidebar content. And this sidebar content is, of course, completely configurable. I'll show you that in a second. The second template is full width. Now if I refresh that, you'll see the content runs across the whole screen. The third, full width without a title. This carpet should disappear because that's the title. There we go. And the last one, we can actually build a custom template using Page Builder. You will recall that earlier on in this tutorial, we set up our home page using Page Builder. We can actually use that tool to set up every single page on our site if we like. And I'll give you an example of that as well. But first, let's select Default Template and I'm going to show you how to edit the sidebar. Go into Appearance, Widgets. You'll see in the sidebar section there is already some content. That corresponds with what you see here. So essentially, you can delete this right here. When you refresh your site, that will disappear and it will turn into a full width because there is no sidebar. But now what you can do is add new widgets into the sidebar and put any content you want. So scroll down, I like to use the visual editor. Once again, it is just like a text editor, very easy to use. You can add content, add text, add images, etc, etc. Let's see what that looks like. You can always go back in and edit anything you see there. You can also add more widgets. Simply drag and drop another visual editor. And you'll actually be able to choose which order you want things to appear. So if you drag this and drop it above that there, it'll save. Then when you refresh, you'll notice the information in that widget appears in that order. So you can go ahead and edit the sidebar with anything you want. You can actually add a Google Map in there as well. That's a really good idea. And I'll show you how you can do that a bit later on. Essentially, anything you can add in a content area here you can also add into the sidebar. 
Now let's choose another page. Floorboards. For this section, let's try using the Page Builder tool. I'll add a new row. I'll leave two columns. What I'll do is I'll put two little circle icons. The two types of floorboards I had were solid pine and I can put a link to our page on solid pine floorboards a little later. For now click done and I can add laminate. You'll see that the two circle icons appear here, but we've got this sidebar which we need to get rid of. Simply select the full width page template. There we are. What I can also do is position the icon on the left. And I'll select an icon for this one as well. Perfect. To add some space between the title and the icons, you can actually add another row. And drag that above there. So that will look a little nicer. Let's add links to our solid pine and laminate pages. So if I go to these pages, all I need is a URL and I can go back in here and into the details. Same thing for the laminate page. There you are, and now the user will be able to click through once they come to your home page. Floorboards. Click through to laminates. And you'll have something about that particular section right there. So that's a breakdown of how to use the page builder on any page. If you need more help with Page Builder, go back and have a look at how we actually set up our home page and it's exactly the same concept. Just remember, if you're using Page Builder, set the template to be a full width page and then you're good to go. So if you have any doubts, go back and watch the section about setting up the home page elements and after that you'll be able to set up any page on your site and make it look exactly the way you want it to look. Quick note, just letting you know, I've taken the time to update a couple of the pages. So for example, carpet. I've set this one up using page builder and floorboards. I've just put some plain text in this one here. 
So don't be alarmed if you see that the pages are a little bit different than what we showed you just a few minutes ago. I want to show you how we can update our homepage tiles that you see here and link them to specific pages of our website. In your dashboard, you'll remember it's in Appearance and Homepage. It's these circle icons we want to edit. Let's make this one carpets. We can make a link text and in the more URL just go back and find out what the URL is. So that there. Click this little checkbox and done. We'll do the same for the next circle icon. Let's link this one to floorboards. Similarly, I can go in, get the URL of the floorboards page, put it in there, and change the link text. You'll see that has taken effect. So basically, a user can come through to your site, click onto one of the tiles, and they'll be taken through to the respective page. Therefore, you can tell that the hierarchy and the user flow of your site is fairly important. So please do take a bit of time in planning your hierarchy. As you already know, you can come back and edit these links or these panels in any way you want anytime in the future. Another cool thing you can do is change the color of the background of this icon. If you go into the circle icon widget, it's this field here that you need to enter a hex color. Basically, go to colorpicker.com You'll see that as you scroll around, every color has a different code, a number and letter code attached to it. That is known as a hex code. So if you just look for a color that you're, you're happy with, Copy the code, place a hashtag, and then paste that code in there. Press done and save. Let's see what that has done to our icon. As you can see, that's changed the color. So you can change the color of this to any color you want, really. Use trial and error, maybe match it up with your menu and actually that's what I'm going to do. I know my hex code for the menu items is that right there. So I'll save that. I'm pretty happy with that. If you wanted to remove it just go back and delete and it'll return back to the original. Now what I'll do is add a contact form. We've already got a page on the site called contact us. So what I'll do is I'll add a contact form perhaps on one side and I'll put a Google map demonstrating the business location on the right hand side. So first thing I need to do, let's go to pages and let's locate the contact us page. Okay, first thing to do, select the full width page. Now I want to build that page using page builder. So let's add a row, 
let's make the first row or column 30%. Actually, let's add three rows. Let's make the first one 30%. Let's make the next one 4%, which I'll leave empty, just for a bit of a gap between the form and the map. And the third one can be 66. So let's insert. Okay, now in this area here, I want to add a widget, and I'll add a visual editor. So now we need to set up the form in this visual editor. So to do that, let me just update this for now. I will open the plugins page in a new tab, and we're going to install a new plugin called Just search for contact form and you'll see that one there by Best Websoft. That one is very, very easy to install, so let's install that and activate the plugin. Cool. Okay, now you should see BWS plugins in the side area. So just click on that. Now all you need to do is enter your email address in this field here. So you can see here, enter the email address you want the messages forwarded to. So this is the email address where you will receive all your inquiries through the contact form. Okay, and that's all you need to do. Click Save Changes. Now what they will give you are these little things called shortcodes. So a short code basically allows you to deploy or install this form anywhere on your website by pasting this uh, short code in the location that you want the form to appear. So all I've done is copied everything here, including the brackets. Now back in this section here, I'll edit the visual editor and I'll go to the text tab and just paste that in there and click done and update. I'll show you what happens when you do that. There you go, the contact form now appears. So essentially anywhere you add this little snippet of code is where your contact form will appear. Okay, back in the Visual tab now. I might just enter some more information. Okay. Great. So that's perfect. A user can come along to the contact page and complete this form and they'll be and we will receive notification in our email inbox. And that's all there is to adding a contact form to your website. The next thing that I will show you how to do is add a dynamic Google Map over here in this area. 
so that your customers can locate your area of business very, very easily. So you'll remember we have set up our Contact Us form already, and we've got the other section here, which is dedicated for our map. So if we just click on that, add a new widget, and add a visual editor. Now we need to go to Google Maps and copy and paste the code for our particular map into the text editor. That's very important because the visual editor is all for any visual text, for bolding, italics, bullet pointing, etc. But if you paste any code in here, it will not render properly. So for any code, you need to paste it in the text tab. So to get that code, go to Google, just search for Google Maps. Enter your exact business address and I'll just use one as, as an example over here. Cool. Then when you've got your exact business address, click on the cog item over here. Click on share or embed map. We want to embed our map and we also want to select a custom size. Let's try 800 by say 350. Then just go to this code, copy all of it, go back into your content editor, in the text tab, paste that code that's provided by Google, click done and save. Now let's refresh. There you go, there is a dynamic Google map. And if you want to make the map larger, you can of course do that, just go back in and select a different size. Then copy that code and replace your existing code with the new code. And there you go, you've got a dynamic Google Map, your customers can find you very easily. If you have a physical place of business, I highly recommend doing this because it just makes things very easy for your customers. Plus, if you have multiple locations, feel free to enter um, your address for each location and also a, a map for each location as well. You can enter as many as you like, one by one. What I can also do is add my actual address above the map. So to do that I will just go into this area here. I'll go back into the visual tab. I'll just enter, give myself some space and I've just pasted the address in there. Okay let's try that. That is great, that's absolutely perfect. Feel free to ask any questions if any of that confuses you or if you have any questions about setting this up for yourself. Now I'm going to show you how to set up one of my favorite features. It is an image gallery where when the user clicks on your image, it will pop up into a beautiful light box, dark light box effect, and they will be able to scroll through your entire image gallery. So the first thing we need to do is go to Plugins, Add New, search for a plugin called Simple Lightbox, and that's the one there, so install and activate. Now go to Pages. Here you can add a new page where your image gallery will sit on or you can select an existing page. The first thing to do is ensure that the page you select is a full width page. 
click update. Now go to the Add Media button, Upload Files. If your images have already been uploaded and exist in the media library, you can select them. Otherwise, you'll need to upload your image gallery files. Now I'll select some images from my PC. I've got them ready here. You can click on the first one, hold down Shift and click on the last one and that will select all. Then hit Open. It will take a few minutes to upload. Once they're all uploaded, go to the Create Gallery link here. Ensure the images you want to create the gallery with are ticked and then go down and create a new gallery. Here you can define how many images you want across in each column. I'm going to select 5. I've got 10 images in total so 5 plus 5 will look good. Actually I've got 11 here, I'll get rid of one. Ensure in this drop down you select Media File and then go down and insert gallery. If you're in the text tab that will show you some code. In the visual tab you'll be able to see your images. Now simply just click update. And that's about it. Let's view the page. That looks absolutely awesome. I've got five across you can change that if you like, by the way. That's completely up to you. When I click on an image, you'll see that it opens up into a light box. There you are. So a user can go through your entire gallery and scroll through your images. And this light box here is already set up and configured on the website that we set up for you. That's why all you had to do was set up and add your images to a gallery. So it's very, very simple. We've made it as easy as possible for you. To make changes, go back to the page and click the pencil button. Here you'll be able to change how many columns, or sorry, how many images you want in each column. So you can play around and depending on how many images you have, you can select the best layout for you. And there you have it. A beautiful looking image gallery that took no effort. Now I'll show you how you can add some social media icons onto your site very, very easily. Obviously first you would need your social media pages set up, for example your Facebook page, Google Plus page, maybe a YouTube channel, etc, etc. But once you have that, you can easily set up some icons so that visitors can access your site and then click onto your social media pages to see more information. Social media is a great thing to build trust and loyalty and get your customer base to speak and communicate with you. To do this, we will need to install a new plugin. So go to your plugins. Search for one called Accurax Social Media and it's that one there, Social Media Widget by Accurax. So let's install that one and then don't forget to activate the plugin. You'll see there's a Social Media Widget in the sidebar here. Click on Settings. Here you can choose from a number of different ways that your buttons will look. I quite like that one there, so I'll select that. Choose your size. You can adjust the order in which they appear.
Now in these fields here, enter your social media URLs. If there are any of these you don't have, that's absolutely fine because any field here that you leave blank, the icon will not appear. So you'll see when I do that here, I'm going to leave a couple of them blank. Um, my Twitter username, eMedia Coach, Facebook URL, So I'm only going to use these five here. Pinterest and the feed URL I'll leave blank and you'll see that those icons won't show up. Hit save changes. Once that's done you can go to any sidebar or widget area on your website and add the social media icons to that area. So we'll add some on our homepage. I might just add the icons in this area here. Click on the box and add widget. Select the Accurex social media widget and that's it. Save the home page. Let's see what that looks like. Cool. So we can actually get rid of this heading and we can change the size and also align the icons left. To do that, go into the edit button here. Remove the title change the icon size and align left. Might make the icons a bit smaller actually. There, that looks good. So as you can see, it's a great way to integrate social media onto your website. Very easy and straightforward. Now the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to add a blog to your existing WordPress website. So the way you can do this is firstly I'd like you to go into settings and go to permalinks. I want you to select a custom structure and delete whatever's in that field there and enter this instead. Now I know earlier I told you to select post name but that was actually a mistake on my behalf. The correct thing to do is custom structure and just enter what I have put in that field there. And to make it easy for you I will actually put this uh, little permalink structure on my eMedia Coach website so you can just copy and paste. Essentially what that will do is it will change the structure of the URLs so it will be yourwebsite.com forward slash the category and we're going to set up a new category called blog so it will be forward slash blog forward slash the name of your blog post so essentially that's what this actually does. So when you do that just go down and save changes now we're going to set up the category called blog. So if you hover over posts and then click on the categories link, all you need to do is put blog as the name and click add new category. And that's it. So now we've added a category called blog and we've set up the URL structure. Now I'll add a couple of new blog posts to show you how everything works. So if you go to posts and add new, now it's really important that when you are adding posts to your blog you do do them as a post not as a page because when you set up things as a page you cannot select a category for a page. You can only designate posts to your blog category. So whenever you're adding a blog post use that posts, add new. And you'll see here 
it'll have the option to um, designate this particular post you make to your blog category and that's something you do not see when you're setting up a page so let's enter a new blog post I will just enter some text from another screen I have just as an example and when you're done with your blog post click publish and if you have selected the blog category you'll notice that the URL of this particular post will be your website forward slash blog forward slash the post name which is the URL structure we just set up so that's perfect that's exactly what we need I will add another couple of posts just to show you as an example so you know how the layout will look like so I've added three blog posts all you need to do now is go to your website.com forward slash blog and you will see your blog listings over here they will all list one after another now if you want to control how many appear on one page you can do that so if you go into um, it will be settings and reading this setting here blog pages to show at most you can control how many blog posts to show on one page before it cuts off and you've got little numbers at the bottom to go to the next next uh, X number of posts and now the next thing we want to do is add blog to our menu area to do that go to appearance and menus we want to add the your website forward slash blog that URL as a custom menu link so if you go to the drop down here links just paste in that URL and give it a title now I might just delete one of these because I know it won't fit on the menu I have now okay cool let's refresh the site there you go you can see now that we've got an item called blog in our menu and so whenever a user comes along to your website and they click on the blog link they will be taken to this page where it will display all of your blog posts one after another and it's the perfect way to add a blog to your existing WordPress website in the time it's taking you to watch this tutorial I've shown you how to create this amazing WordPress website I hope you found it useful and please do thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome stuff in the future and if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me because I'm always happy to help people out so do reach out if you need a hand I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up and also share it via Facebook because I know there are many people out there who would love to get a hold of this and follow this for their own businesses. Until next time, see you then.